All right, thanks, Tony. The extreme cold weather has been causing ice jams to clog waterways up and down the northeast. And the situation is so bad in some places, the Coast Guard has been called in to help break up the ice. Meteorologist Pete Mangione joins us in studio with more. New at 530. Pete. Well, for our neighbors to the north and west, rain and snow headlines have been taking a back seat to ice jams. This was the scene this week on the Connecticut River as the Coast Guard tried to break up the massive chunks of ice. We've had some ice requests, uh, ice breaking requests uh, from some marinas and some vessels up the uh, Connecticut River. Uh, basically, the ice reach, reaches a thickness that is beyond their capabilities of breaking through safely. So. What we're doing is we're going to try to push up through there, break as much ice as we can, clear a path, hopefully uh, wide enough to get some of those vessels to come down through the Connecticut River. Over in Athol, Massachusetts, the Miller's River has been jammed up in several areas, including this bridge, which was rammed by chunks of ice. When the ice let go from here, it brought a mass of uh, shards, chunks of ice that are heavy and, and dangerous, not ice cubes. There's quite a difference between those scenes and this one on the Patuxet River in West Warwick. There were some patches of snow on the banks, but the river was flowing jam-free. Back in Massachusetts and Connecticut, the ice jams were formed by a combination of conditions, including the warm soaking rains that fell on many of the frozen rivers. The resulting rapid melting created chunks of ice, which flowed downstream and in some cases caused bottlenecks and flooding, as this Athol resident found out. And I woke up and the backyard was completely flooded. So why no major ice jams in our area? The National Weather Service told me it's not obvious, but it comes down to the shape and configuration of each river. I'm meteorologist Pete Mangione, Eyewitness News.